Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk to you guys about if statements in C Sharp. Now, an if statement is basically a special structure in our program, which will allow our program to respond to different situations. So essentially with if statements, our programs can become smarter. And I want to show you guys some examples of if statements, and we're going to kind of look at how we can create and use if statements in our programs. Now over here, I have this little text file open. And one of the cool things about if statements is that as human beings, we encounter them every single day. So over here, I have some examples of if statements that you might see on a daily basis. So up here it says, I wake up, if I'm hungry, I eat breakfast. So this is an example of an if statement. Essentially an if statement has two parts. It has a condition, which is right here, and then it has an action that gets executed when the condition is true. So our condition up here is, if I'm hungry. Now this condition is either true or false. It can only have two possible values, true or false. You're either hungry or you're not. If you are hungry, in other words, if this condition is true up here, then you're going to eat breakfast. But if you're not, if this condition is false, then you're just going to move on. And that is the essence of an if statement. We check a condition. If the condition is true, then we'll perform an action. If the condition is false, then we'll move on and we won't perform that action. So just like you're able to make a decision about whether or not you're hungry and whether or not you should eat breakfast, um, we can use these in our programs to do the same thing, to make decisions. There's another one down here. It says, I look at my phone. If it's about to die, I charge it. So again, this is a condition. It's either true or false. If it's true, if your phone is about to die, then you charge it. Otherwise, we're just going to move on. Here's a little bit of a more complex if statement. It says, I leave my house. If it's cloudy, I bring an umbrella. So again, here's our condition. If it's true, then we're going to bring the umbrella. If it's false though, now we're going to do something else. So up here, when the condition was false, we just moved on. But now if this condition's false, otherwise we're going to bring our sunglasses. So we're going to do something else. And these are just some basic if statements, but I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of what these were before we implement them in our programs. So we can do essentially the same thing, but we can allow our programs to make decisions. So when certain conditions are true, we can do certain things. And if they're false, then we can do other things. So let's go back over to our program.c sharp. And you'll see down here, I'm just in my main method. And I'm going to show you guys how we can use some if statements. So before we do any if statements, I'm actually going to create uh, a variable. So this is going to be a Boolean variable. And I'm just going to call it is male. And this variable is going to tell us whether or not somebody is a male. So I'm a male. So I'm going to set this equal to true. So now we have this Boolean variable is male and it has a value of true. Now what I want to do is I want to create an if statement and we can actually create an if statement based off of this is male variable. So let's say that we have this variable in our program. We're working with it and we want to do something when the person is male. So inside of our program, when the person's male, when this variable is true, we want to be able to do something. I can use an if statement to check that. I can come down here and say if, and I'm going to make an open and closed parentheses and an open and closed curly bracket. And this is sort of the general outline of an if statement in our program. Now, inside of this parentheses, I want to specify a condition. So just like over in that text file, we had some conditions like if I'm hungry or if my phone's about to die. Inside of these parentheses, we want to specify a condition. Now, this condition needs to be a true or a false value, right? If I'm hungry, that was our condition before that's true or false, right? It can only have one of two values. If my phone's about to die is true or false. It can only have one of two values. So inside of this parentheses, we need to put a condition, which is basically just going to be a true or a false value. So in my case, I want to check to see if the person is male. So I can say if is male. And if this variable is true, then we're going to be able to execute the code that we put down here. So why don't we just write out, console dot write line and we'll just write out you are male. So we're writing out console dot write line if the variable is male is equal to true. So let's go ahead and run this program and you'll see over here it's printing out you are male. So our program was smart enough to determine whether or not someone was male. If I was to set this equal to false and now I went to run my program, when I run the program, you'll notice that nothing is going to get printed out because 
the variable was false. So this line of code down here only gets executed when this condition up here in these parentheses is true. So that's how we can use a basic if statement. But let's say that when is mail was false, we wanted to do something else. So let's say even if this variable was false, we wanted to try and do something else. Well, I can actually use another keyword in C sharp, which is called else. So I can say else and open and close curly bracket. And then down here, we can write out another line of code. So I'm actually just going to copy this guy. And down here, we're going to write out you are not male. So when they are male, we'll tell them that. And when they're not male, when is male is false, we'll also tell them that. So is male is false right now, and it should tell us that. So it should tell us you are not male. Essentially, what we've done now is we've created a program that is able to respond to the value of a variable. So this program can respond to this variable, right? If is male is true, then we're going to print out you are male. If is male is false, then we're going to print out you are not male. So our program is smart. Our program can adapt and adjust what it's doing depending on the value of a variable. And therein lies the essence of if statements. If statements allow our programs to make decisions and to do different things when different conditions are met. But this is a very simple if statement. In fact, this is probably like the simplest if else statement that we could write. I'm going to make this a little bit more complex and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create another variable. So I'm going to come up here and make another Boolean and I'm just going to call it is tall. And this is tall variable again is going to store a true or a false value. So why don't we set both of these equal to true just to start off. So this is tall variable is going to tell us whether or not someone is tall. So this will determine if they're like tall or short. And down here, let's say that instead of just checking to see if they are male, we also wanted to check to see if they're tall. So I can say if is male, and I can actually use another uh, operator in C sharp, and it's called the and operator. So I can say two ampersands like this, and this stands for and. And basically, when we use this and operator, it allows me to write two conditions in the same condition block. So it allows me to not only check to see if they're male, but I could also check to see if they're tall. So now this is saying if is male and is tall. So now not only does is male have to be true, but is tall also has to be true for this whole thing to be true. So if one of these guys was false, then this whole thing would be false. So now down here, I could say you are a tall male. Right. And then down here, instead of saying you are not male, I could instead say you are either not male or not tall or both. Right. Because if this code gets executed, it means one or both of the conditions up here is false. So let me demonstrate this. You'll see over here, both of these are set to true. And when I run my program, it's going to be able to respond to that. So you'll see it says you are a tall male because both of those were true. But let's say I set one of these to false. So I set is male equal to false. Well, now, because one of these guys is false, this whole thing is going to be false. So we're going to print this out down here. So now when I run the program, you'll see it's printing out you are either not male or not tall or both. So it's able to respond to those two variables in our program. In addition to using this and operator, we can also use another operator, which is called or. And or does the same thing as and except it's a little bit different. So or will allow us to check two conditions. But this time only one of these conditions has to be true for this whole thing to be true. So we would read this as if is male or is tall. So they either have to be male or they have to be tall or they can be both. And then we'll be able to execute this code right here. But if both of these guys are false, then we're going to go down here and execute this code. So let me just demonstrate this really quick. And I'm not going to bother changing the text here. You guys kind of hopefully get what's going on. So even though false and true are both up here, so even though one of these guys is false, we're still going to be able to print out you are a tall male. But if I was to make both of these false, now we're going to end up printing out you are either not male or not tall or both which again, I realize isn't the right text for that, but you can just kind of understand what's going on. So it says you are either not male or not tall or both. So that's the difference between and and or. When we use and here, 
both of these conditions have to be true. So both of these variables would have to be true for this whole thing to be true and for us to execute that code. When we use or, only one of them has to be true. So this could be false or this could be false, but one of them has to be true for the whole thing to be true. And that's really the difference. So I'm gonna turn this back to and, and I wanna show you guys some other stuff we can do. So right now we're able to check the condition where they're male and they're tall. But there's also a couple different scenarios in addition to that. For example, let's say that they're male, but they're not tall. Well, what if we wanted to do something when they were male, but they were not tall? So if they're like a short male, I can actually use another keyword, another reserved word in C sharp, which is called else if, and I can just type out else if like this, I can make an open and close parentheses and an open and close curly bracket. And then I'm just going to make a new line. So essentially what I did here was I added in else if, and then you can see this else basically goes after it. When I use else if, it allows me to check another condition. So if this condition up here is false, I can actually come down here and check another condition. So we wanted to check to see if they were male and they were not tall. So I could say else if is male and now I need to figure out how I can specify not tall. So remember this variable is tall will tell us if they're tall or not. If I wanted to find out if they're not tall, I could just say exclamation point is tall. And this is going to read as not tall, not is tall. This exclamation point here is what's known as the negation operator. And this will basically negate the condition. So over here I have is tall. If this was true, then when I put this exclamation point here, it's going to make it false. If this was false, when I put this exclamation point here, it's going to make it true. So this whole thing is going to be true when the person is not tall. And so now this is essentially checking to see if they're male and they're not tall. So down here we could write another message. So I could basically say like, you are a short male because they're male, but they're not tall. And finally, I'm going to make one more else if, so I'm just going to come down here and there's one more thing that we want to check. So I also want to check to see if they're tall, but they're not male. Right, so over here we're checking if they're male and they're tall. Over here we're checking to see if they're male and they're not tall. And down here I wanna check to see if they're not male and they are tall. So this is saying else if not male and is tall. So down here we can put another little message and I'm just gonna basically say like, you are not a male, but you are tall. So this is essentially just saying exactly what it is. You're not male, but you are tall. And then down here for this else, remember this code now is only going to get executed when none of these conditions up here are true. So now down here, we can just say you are not male and not tall. All right. So let me walk you guys through this one more time up here. I'm saying if is male and is tall. So this condition is only going to be true when both of these are true. And then if this is true, we're going to come down here and execute this code. We're going to say you are a tall male, but if this is false, we're going to come down here to this else if, and we're going to check another condition. So only when this is false, are we going to check this condition down here? And we're basically going to check to see if they're male and they're not tall. And yeah, I'm using this negation operator here. And if that's true, then we're going to tell them that we're going to print that out. Then we're going to check to see if they're not male and they're tall and we'll print out a message for that. And then finally we'll say you are not male and not tall. So let's go ahead and run our program and you'll see both of these guys are going to be set to true initially and we'll try all these different combinations. So both of them are set to true. I'm going to run the program and it says you are a tall male. So our program was smart enough to be able to respond to the value of these two variables. So now let's set is male equal to false. So I'm going to come down here and we'll just say false. And now essentially this is going to be able to respond. So I can run my program now and you'll see it's printing out. You are not male, but you are tall. So it was able to respond to that different value. Now we'll set is male back equal to true and we'll set is tall equal to false. And now we should get a appropriate response. So it says you are a short male. And finally, if these are both equal to false, then again, the program's going to be able to respond to that. So it's going to say you are not male and not tall. Awesome. 
So essentially what we did with these if statements was we allowed our program to respond to different values, right? Our program was able to make decisions based off the information that it was given. And this is really just scratching the surface of if statements. Um, you'll see over here, we're using these Boolean variables, right? But there's actually another way that we can specify these conditions and it's using something called comparisons. And in the next tutorial, I'm gonna talk to you guys all about comparisons, about how to use them. And it's basically just another way that these if statements can come in handy. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.